Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today's video is called What Personal Type is the Most Intuitive? And the reason I'm making this is because I believe that intuition and sensing is not a black and white scale. It's not either you're intuitive or you're sensory, and there is nothing in between. But in reality, there is an in between. And this video will show you a little bit about how different personal types use intuition and use sensing, because all personal types can use intuition and all types can use sensing and do so differently. Differently. Now, if we look at it in a simple way, what I can see is there is one type that really wins the intuition race. So one type is just more intuitive than any other, and that's the ENTP personality type. So yeah, ENTPs, uh, they win the contest on intuition. If you uh, want to take a personality type that you want to most purely represent the intuition and intuitives in general, it's the ENTP. Their minds are just so far reaching and abstract. They can think about things both philosophically and creatively. They are good at not just uh, conceptualizing ideas, but relativizing them. They can see nuances between ideas. They can flip and turn and change perspectives more easily than any other personnel type. So if you argue with an ENTP, what you often see most at work is the power of intuition. And this is something that you're also going to see in the ENFP personnel type. Yes, the ENFP personnel type really carries the second place of intuition. And what I've seen from ENFPs is just this remarkable ability to conceptualize, to come up with new concepts, to come up with new ideas, to read patterns, to connect dots, to think one step ahead, to think about what's going to happen in the future, to think about what's going to happen next, to be able to read between the lines, to hear hidden intentions in what people say, to make connections, to be creative, to apply yourself creatively. Now, if we move further down the scale, one type that is very intuitive is the INTJ. And what I see with INTJ is this ability to create this one far-reaching concept that often encompasses everything. And that's often the essence of introverted intuition. And INTJs are the strongest in introverted intuition, stronger even than an INFJ. When uh, you look at an INTJ, often what comes up is just this ability to conceptualize a vision and to see for yourself where you need to go and what you need to do and how you need to get there. And that is just uh, the brilliance of intuition. And now we're going to walk into the downsides of this later on. So don't think of this as a good or bad scale. It's not that ENTPs are the top, that they are the best. <laughs> oh, this, this high intuition comes with a downside, I promise you. Now, when you look at these four types, the ENTP, ENFP, INTJ, and INFJ, these four types are called intuitive dominance. That means they are the most dominant in their use of intuition, more so than in sensing, feeling, or thinking. That means if you compare intuition to sensing, thinking, or feeling, these four types win the intuitive race. They um, prefer this function above any of the other values. They value freedom more highly. They are more concerned with the future. They are more preoccupied with ideas. They are more focused on uh, possibilities. Now, that means one core thing, of course. It means that they lack grit and discipline, that they can struggle with follow through, that they can struggle to be concrete, that they can be unspecific, that they can be too idealistic, that they can attach themselves to radical or extreme ideas or uh, pure ideals that don't or cannot exist in the real world, that they um, focus on uh, or make things so abstract that there is no practical course of action. So you can have an idea or a concept of something, but it might not fit into the environment you are in, or it might not have a role or purpose in anything you do. So that's the problem of uh, intuition. Now, further down the scale, we have the INTP, and after that, we have the INFP. So these two types, they have this uh, ability to be often both creative and philosophical. They are neither pure philosophers, nor are they neither purely creative types. They are a kind of a mix, a healthy mix of intuition, meaning they are able to use intuition to a very high extent and they are able to be very good at it. But 
they are also able to use sensing to a decent or healthy degree, which means they are more balanced in the use of sensing and intuition than what the other four types are. INTPs, they take the lead because they tend to approach things very mentally and that because they have this strong introverted thinking. So this predisposition to uh, thinking and to perceiving leads them to really juggle with ideas, to weigh options and possibilities, but with the goal of making a decision. That means they are thinking dominance and they want to make a decision and they may want to come to a conclusion and they want to place ideas in a context that is logical in its nature. Similarly, the INFP wants to do so for concepts that are ethical in their nature. So it has to relate to the self and one's identity. Finally, the least intuitive of all intuitive types are the ENTJs and ENFJs. So yeah, these types do tend to occupy the middle of this scale. This means they are better at extroverted sensing. They're better at pushing for their ideas. They're better at putting themselves out there. They're more assertive about what they think. They're better at getting themselves understood by other people. So when an ENTJ or an ENFJ uses intuition, they often do so as translators. These types, they enjoy picking up the more crazy radical ideas of other intuitives and then transforming them and packaging them in a way that other people, the group at large, can understand. This desire to want the group at large to understand something or for something to be valuable to society is what really makes these types a bit in between on intuition and sensing. You could say they are the ambiverts of N and S. We have two other ambiverts and that's um, perhaps easy to guess. We have the ISFP and we have the ISTP. So when you speak to an ISTP or an ISFP, what you can notice is, yeah, these types tend to lend themselves to pretty decent introverted intuition, meaning they are able to conceptualize, uh, meaning they're able to think about things metaphysically, meaning they're able to entertain what ifs, meaning they're able to uh, look at things from underneath and that they're able to dig into an idea. And yeah, all those things uh, can lend themselves to a decent intuition. And the bonus is these types tend to be quite practical and pretty good at applying ideas. So they can take a vision and then they can think about practical steps and actions they can take in their personal lives to manifest these ideas. And that means to them, intuition is really the low hanging fruits of the trees. If there is a tree of intuition and if ENTPs always want to go climb to the top of that tree and wants all those ideas and wants to really hoard ideas, uh, ISTP and ISFP, they can see that, oh, there's an apple there and the, that's very easy to get. So I just go pick that apple. Oh, that's a great apple. <laughs> so this is the low hanging fruit intuitives or the sensors that uh, could be mistaken for intuitives very easily because when um, other sensors might talk to these types, they might think, oh, they're a bit weird or a bit aloof or a bit different or a bit more in their own heads. And that's true. ISTPs and ISFPs, they can be a bit prone to daydreaming and philosophizing and uh, losing themselves in a fantasy version of reality. And that's just part of that, those two types. Then, of course, we have the other types that are not sensory dominant, and that's ESTJs and ESFJs. Yeah, of course, these types, uh, they are able to be quite creative and they're able to use quite good extroverted intuition and they're able to put themselves in other people's shoes and a lot of time to think about things from different perspectives if necessary, but they also tend to make up their mind pretty well and they tend to be pretty steady in what they think. And because they have pretty strong views and because they are pretty strong in themselves and their own identity, they're less likely to change their minds and to entertain different perspectives. If other people think differently, they might entertain the idea quickly for a few seconds, but then they'll go, ah, oh, nah, don't think so. And then they will kind of go back to what they prefer. And that's uh, the thing, yeah, it's hard to get these types to change their minds because they're quite strong in their values or in their beliefs. And that's because they are belief-centric types. You know, these, uh, for these eight types, they're all discerning types. So judgment, values, beliefs, those things make up their existence and their core priorities. These four types, they are observation types, just as, and now I'm going to reveal the last four, the final four, ISTJ, ISFJ, ESTP, and ESFP. 
So these eight types are observing types. That means they are principally concerned with information. They want to know things. They want to understand things. They want to get things. And uh, they care more about this gathering of ideas and hoarding of ideas or hoarding of things uh, over that of the decision-making process or value systems or the beliefs that make up a person's identity or who they are. ESFPs are the least intuitive of all types, but the most sensory of all types. And that's pretty logical to deduce. It's logical because the ESFP is one that really places themselves in reality. Their feet are solidly on the ground. They are able to enjoy the moment fully. They are present. They grab attention naturally. People get them very easily. It's very easy for an ESFP to make themselves understood to others. The ESFP feels comfortable usually on stage or in front of a group and does not get easily overwhelmed by sensation. So, uh, they are not highly sensitive by any decree. They are easily able to handle a punchline or a yoke or any kind of thing that you put on them. Similarly, of course, the ESTP, they can go with the flow. They can take things as they come. They can adapt to most situations. Now, this is not to say that they cannot be intuitive. They can find intuition interesting. You know, if you are interested in it, an ESTP will find it interesting because you are interested in it. And that's the core you have to understand when you talk about intuition and sensing. These types, the sensory types, have different interests to the intuitive types. So the sensory types, they have passions and hobbies and things that are usually in different areas. That means in friendship groups, in hobby groups, these uh, two types, the sensory types and intuitive types, don't really tend to hang out much together. But when you meet in school settings or in work or in other things, or if you start forming a relationship or a bond together, and you or perhaps your family members, what will happen is um, you'll notice that, oh, there's people, they have these really cool interests that I've never thought about. And they have these really cool ideas that I've never heard of. And if you care about this person or if you like this person, it's going to be, you're going to find yourself getting naturally curious about what they have to say. You're going to be like, what is that? What? Why do they care about that? Why do they find that so much fun? And uh, you're gonna have to try it out with them and because they enjoy it and because they are laughing while they're doing it, chances are you're gonna start laughing too and you're gonna start enjoying it because they enjoy it. And that's it. We can naturally kind of influence each other's interests and hobbies and around other sensors, you might find yourself becoming a bit more sensory. And that's the thing. If you feel like you want to develop more grit, if you want more hands-on grasp on reality, if you want to be more practical about things, if you want to uh, find ways to deal with practical reality, our sensory types are your best friends and they're going to be happy to help you to get you out. And they're going to enjoy seeing that transformation from head to physical reality from mind to body you know they're gonna enjoy getting you into that lifestyle so yeah um this is my ranking most intuitive entp least intuitive esfp if you have any thoughts about this feel free to let me know in the comments down below and uh, how would you rate the types and what type would you say is the most intuitive and the most sensory and how are you seeing this in these personal types i believe this kind of ranking can be helpful because if you see a person that you think is, uh, are they intuitives or are they sensors? Chances are they're somewhere in between. <laughs> they are probably types that are a bit ambiverted in terms of sensing and intuition. And uh, that's a thing and that's um, completely normal and uh, there's nothing weird about it. Uh, it's um, just a way, a tool to help. If you notice somebody is crazy intuitive or crazy sensory or crazy hands-on, yeah, that's gonna be a clue also to their personnel types. You can also use this for typing purposes. Now, I wanna say thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.